And then there's NAIA again. Um, <laughs> so it's interesting when I listen to these guys, I, it's good, you learn, you know? But we, what we do is, is we have a budget, okay? And, and um, there are schools that blow my budget away. Um, and, and so what we do is academics. Academics is huge. And I think our D3s will, will uh, join in. It is so important to do well in school. At St. Francis, you can get uh, athletic money, and it, that's de determined on who we need in, what type of player you are, and then your academic money is stacked on top of that. Um, if you get any other scholarships, uh, it's that can be stacked on too. So if you're going into education, if you're going into nursing, and there's other scholarships that are available for you, those are just stacked on top of that. Um, your financial aid, you know, your, um, your state aid, that's all stacked on top. Um, a non-athlete who comes to St. Francis uh, will fill out um, an early estimate form, basically your financial aid. And if you're a non-athlete, it goes, it's called grant money. That's the only thing that is non-stackable at St. Francis and, and for us. So if you come in and you're needy, uh, you may come in and have a need base of $9,000. Um, I have to beat that athletically. So I have to absorb that. So if you're not that good, and I wasn't going to offer you, you know, more money than that, um, that's where you may become a walk-on player for me. Um, so there's, I, when I was, uh, when my older son, he went to Marquette and played, and I let him do everything. I didn't get involved with any of the coaching and uh, talks, discussions, nothing. And in fact, the head coach kept asking me, where am I? And I, I didn't want to involve myself. But he did say, and I talked to uh, another coach uh, who's at uh, Colgate right now, and as my son was going through the process, I asked him a couple questions, and, and he says, uh, he goes, for financial, you talk to the coaches. Get involved. And that's, a, I, that's the only uh, thing that I would say with most parents is when it does come down to the financial end, I think parents have to step in and get involved. You do want your uh, daughter, son to do uh, the process. You know, coaches don't want to look across from a table every time and see mom and dad and daughter. You know, they want to see assertiveness. They want to see that kid who's going to come on campus and take care of herself, her own communications and all that stuff. But as far as the financials and really understanding it, I think a lot of times it's either, and they may tell you, hey, talk to the admissions or talk to this person or talk to that person to get a full understanding of it because it's not easy. When you, when you can see the differences uh, with uh, um, the D1 and then uh, D3 finance is different um, and then to NAIA is different. So um, like I said with us, um, you know, some schools just have this pool of money and it is, it, there's some kind of formula that NAIA has but I'm not near that, so I really don't have to worry about it. But, you know, on average, if you're a good student uh, coming to St. Francis, um, you know, you're, you're doing very well. And the key is be a good student. You know, tutor for the ACT. You know, that 23 to 24 can earn you $2,000 more per year. That's $8,000. Uh, being a 3.5 to a 3.8 can make you from 10 to 12,000 academically, plus honor uh, society money. So being a good student earns you a lot of money at a lot of schools academically, you know, to put a little bit uh, of extra work in. Um, so it is a little bit different at the NAIA. We are stackable uh, versus, I think, the D1, and uh, it's a little bit different. I think one thing that is consistent between NAIA and I think all of us is, is being an, a very good academically. I mean, that's going to help you no matter where you are. So don't, you know, there are a lot of differences, but anywhere you go at any, any of these schools at this table and really anywhere in the country, your academics are so, so important. Uh, one, because you represent your team at a, at, a, at, a, at a high standard academically and athletically, and those things are very important. And on the second, second hand, you're easier to recruit if you're bringing in some academic dollars into the equation. 
Because if you're if you're a teetering player, where I know I've got to be, come up with a little bit more money, maybe to, maybe to get you, and you come in with a, a great ACT score and your ranking class is awesome. Some schools that makes a big difference. And as a coach, you're more recruitable um, if your academic standard is very very high. Because I know when you get to whatever school you go to, that coach isn't going to have to worry about you in the classroom. They're going to take care of you on the field, and you're going to take care of yourself in the classroom. And that is a very very marketable component at any university. And one more, I guess this is the piece of advice piece. Um, and, and this is the difference again between us being an equivalency sport versus a headcount sport. A lot of players out there will take the scholarship that they're offered as an indication of how much that coach wants you. But Paula just said, every year our financial situation may change. I may have five scholarships because I had a senior class graduate or I thought I was going to have five, but someone redshirted, so now I can't spend that money, so I have less to offer in that class. So my, I may be offering you 30%, and she may be offering you 80%. It doesn't mean there's a difference in how bad we want you to be a part of our program necessarily. I talk to our volleyball coach all the time, and they're a headcount sport. They don't ever have to deal with that. You're offering a full ride, I'm offering a full ride. So the only assessment they have of how bad they want you is, where am I going to fit in with the playing time perspective and the other pieces of the puzzle? Make sure that you factor in the answer to how do I fit into your program? When do you see me playing? What role am I going to have? The answer to those questions with respect to how you're going to fit in with that program is more important than how much money you're going to offer me. With respect to how you're going to fit in with that program, Although you all laughed when someone said that finances aren't really important um, in this day and age, I understand that finances play a piece of the puzzle. What I'm saying is don't automatically equate the percentages. If all of us were recruiting you, you might get offered anywhere from 10% to 100%. It doesn't mean that John wants you 10% and he wants you 100%. It means that's where we all are financially. And if you equate that offer with how bad you're wanted, you may end up at a place that's not exactly the right place for you. Um, factor it into the equation, but don't equate it with desire necessarily. Because of the equivalency part, it puts us all in a different place. If we were a headcount sport, we'd all be at, in the same place, and you'd be able to really evaluate on the intangible things that you probably should be evaluating on. And you want to make sure you keep those in perspective. 